I don't know if my parents are thinking about moving down. Yep, yep, I think that means that I'm going to bed at 9 a.m., 9 p.m. tonight. <laughs> 9 a.m., nice and early. <laughs> All right, something I've really enjoyed about high school and middle school and even elementary school is that there's so many amazing programs to teach you about music. Music enriches my life, and I know it enriches the lives of many others. But someone I know who's very, very passionate about music is Pedro Grapple, and he's going to be talking about music as a solution for, for poverty. Good evening, everyone. My name is Peter Rarell, and when I was close to my eighth birthday, I started reading a series of books that talked about the wonders that human beings have developed throughout their history. I was, and I'm still very amazed about the fact of how far we have come. To put it in perspective, in the last two millenniums, we have been able to harness the elements, discover the applications of electricity, and more recently, connecting the world with the internet. We have done a pretty good job. However, as I grew older, I realized that our world is not perfect. We still face many challenges, equality issues, food shortages, among many others. And if we make an analysis of the causes of those problems, poverty is related to most, if not all of them. Therefore, Solving poverty would imply an important progress into solving all of these problems. Excellent. Now we're just facing the biggest conundrum of our century. How do we solve poverty? Poverty can be defined as the state in which a person does not have the basic resources to be a successful member of society. It has existed with us ever since we signed the early social contracts, even earlier on. But where did it start? I grew up hearing that poverty started here, in our heads. Poverty did not start in the Bronx or in the favelas. It started in our heads. Therefore, to solve it, we need to solve it in there. Now, it's important to make a distinction between two kinds of poverty. The first is mental poverty, which is not really similar to the conventional concept of poverty, but it's more related to the concepts of wit and perseverance. You see, a person may be living in a palace full of luxury, but if they stop trying to be perseverant and stop trying to be better every day, they live in mental poverty. On the other hand, material poverty deals with the lack of access to tangible resources, food, water, among many others. And according to a World Bank research, Two out of seven people in the world live in this state. Two out of seven. This number is unacceptable. Yet, there are many people out there who, in spite of living in these conditions of material poverty, have succeeded. Maybe the names Albert Einstein, Oprah Winfrey, or Steve Jobs ring a bell. All of these people, and many more like them, share characteristics of perseverance, wit, and they have the ability to set goals. They have something I like to call mental wealth. And as the Venezuelan scholar Jose Antonio Abreu once said, mental wealth is one of the few things that will defeat material poverty. Therefore, if we want to make an important step into solving poverty, we need to create that mental wealth. So there's actually a lot of causes that are fighting for this throughout the world. There's one in the Netherlands I like to mention, it's called Pedals for Poverty. And what they try to do is that they try to teach these values of perseverance and wit to kids by learning how to ride bicycles. However, I think that there's a part of the solution that is being ignored. That solution is in the arts. And since art is a really wide subject, it covers from the most normal comic books and movies, like The Avengers or Batman, to the most beautiful sculptures and paintings, Today we're just going to talk about one that we're all really familiar with, which is music. It is not a secret that music brings important health benefits, just like sleep. 
And according to a research study done by the Massachusetts General Hospital, music does reduce anxiety and depression, and it also improves cognitive ability. These are really important benefits that are emphasized when a kid is trying to learn an instrument or joining a choir. But I think that there is more to this art form. I am a musician, and I've worked and studied with several organizations whose main focus is trying to bring music to kids in communities that are not are like low resources communities. Among them, the Sistema program in Venezuela, and more recently, the National Take a Stand initiative in the, prompted by the Los Angeles Philharmonic. And working and studying there, I was able to interact with kids as young as six years old. And you can see how they truly develop discipline. But there is something uh, I can, that I consider groundbreaking. Is that when a kid is playing an instrument, whether they have, uh, whether what it, what, whatever their socioeconomic status is, whatever their age is, or whatever their playing ability is, you can see them, how they set goals in a short and a medium term. And you can see how they take action as they're practicing to like complete those goals. These are really important skills that they can use in all of the spheres in their life. But even more, let's do something really quickly. Picture your favorite band or your favorite music ensemble when they're performing, maybe a rock band and classical music ensemble. What are they doing? They're performing and hopefully they're getting paid. But <laughs> Uh, but also, if you look closer, each one of them is doing a very specific thing. Each one of them is doing what they're best at, and they are all following a pre-established set of rules, a pre-established set of agreements. And they are all doing it for a common goal. That sounds like the description of an ideal society to me. That certainly sounds like the core values of the world in, we, in which we want our children to live in. So, through music, we can, we're able to create this mental wealth that will make children capable to fight for their dreams, whether these ones are music related or not. What I'm trying to say is not that everyone should become a musician, but that we should not ignore the arts as a solution for the problem of poverty. And now that I have the honor to be standing in front of the greatest generation of all, the future doctors, researchers, engineers, teachers. I just ask you to find solutions like this in each one of your fields. If, we're all, if we all do this, we are going to be in a strong course into solving the problem of poverty. Thank you very much.